Let's quickly talk about uh, transitioning from partnership to C corporation. What are the tax implications? Okay. And so here's an overview I want you to pay attention to. So basically, the, the thing is that when we talk about the tax implications of converting from a partnership to a C corporation, you need to understand, first of all, the difference between a partnership and C corporation. So st starting a, a corporation can be simpler than a C corporation, but from a tax perspective, they're often seen as the more complex entity type. And one of, one of the reasons is that LCs and or partnerships don't pay taxes directly. So this obligation is passed on to the members of the LLC or the partners for that matter. And each partner or each member of the LLC must allocate the proper ratio of profit and losses each year on Schedule K-1. So basically what happens here is that the partnership itself doesn't file any taxes unless, uh, I mean, it doesn't pay taxes. It, it must file um, Form 1065. And but uh, it doesn't pay taxes at all. But uh, it, it does issue a Schedule K one to each uh, partner or each member of the LLC, so that basically the 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 taxes will be paid at the individual level. Okay. So this so the bottom line here is that you have uh, this is a pass through structure. So the pass through structure of paying taxes for a partnership is one of the reasons why C corporations are more favorable when raising capital because C C corporation can actually a C corporation can pay taxes itself versus passing the, through the tax burden onto shareholders so this is kind of interesting to shareholders right? and uh, so when we talk about there are some timing considerations when converting from a partnership to a c corporation so if you're planning to convert your partnership into a c corporation timing will be very key for any tax related changes that need to happen okay so when you convert your business from a partnership to uh, a corporation you must apply for a new employer id that will be uh, used for income tax and payroll tax reporting purposes. And in some cases, this process alone can take days or weeks. So planning out the conversion ahead of time can, can go a long way. And additionally, your taxes may be impacted by the effective date of the conversion since the uh, LC and or partnership and C corporation will have two different employee ID numbers. For example, if your partnership uh, converts to a corporation on July 1st, you must file two income tax returns, one of the part, one for the partnership covering the pre-conversion part of the year and a corporate tax return covering the rest of the year. By the way, boss, welcome back to the show. It's really a pleasure to have you here. Make yourself comfortable. You are going to enjoy today's conversation. Let me talk to you about the strategy you need to apply if you are going from uh, if you are transitioning fiscally speaking from partnership to C corporation. Now there are some considerations for for like uh, if you are a startup and you are you're trying to convert from a partnership to a corporation, there are a few considerations to really think about. So when is the right time to convert to a corporation? It's one of those things where you have to really ask yourself. I have a partnership right now. Okay, uh, how do I convert? When do I convert? Now most often the decision to convert to a corporate uh, status is driven by investors who require that the entity convert prior to making the investment. However, if founders have time to uh, plan a schedule uh, and schedule the conversion, then the administrative burden associated with the conversion can be reduced by making the conversion effective on the first day of the entity's taxable year, generally January 1st. That's what you want. If you're listening to me right now, you want you want the effective year to be January 1st. Don't try to do anything in between the year. No, it, it's too complicated. Do it January 1st. So this will avoid the need to file a final partnership tax return for the part of the year prior to the conversion and a separate stub year return for the corporate for the corporation for the remainder of the year, which in turn requires additional accounting work to determine the portion of the income or loss for the year that is allocable to the pre and post conversion periods. You don't want to go through that. It's too complicated. In short, converting effect effective as of the beginning of the taxable year reduces the administration expense and time involved in dealing with two different entities in a single year. So this, the same is true for payroll and other employment tax filings. Because the corporation is a different entity than the, the partnership for tax purposes, employees will become employees of uh, the corporation at the time of the conversion. However, if the conversion occurs mid-year and the alternative procedure described in uh, Revenue uh, Procedure 2004-53-53 is elected, the partnership is relieved of the obligation to furnish W-2s to the employees and the corporation instead has the responsibility, thereby relieving the employees from receiving separate W-2s from the partnership and the corporation. 
it can be too complicated. Don't don't go into that. Okay. And uh, so the reason is you want to actually do things a little smoothly. You need to understand that tax issues can be paramount in considering a conversion from a partnership to a corporation. So while the conversion usually will not trigger gain, the conversion can be taxable. So this will often occur when the partnership has spent borrowed money and deducted the expenditures, which depending on the facts can cause the partnerships, the, part, the partnership members, so the, the partners to recognize gain on the conversion. The, the company's accountant should always be engaged to calculate the tax effects of the conversion prior to undertaking the conversion in the first place. By the way, boss, I want to quickly remind you of, uh, of today's topic. We're talking about transitioning from partnership to C-corporation. What are the tax implications? Let me talk to you about what are the ways to convert a partnership to a corporation. So there are four commonly used ways to convert a partnership to a corporation and one much less common way. First of all, you have the statutory conversion to a corporation. So basically, most states allow partnerships, LCs, and LPs for that matter, to be converted to a corporation by the simple filing of documents with the state. So at the time of the conversion, the partnership by operation of law becomes a corporation and therefore the owner of all the assets, liabilities, and obligations of the partnership. So this is the the, the straightforward route. Then you also have the, the second route. You can form a new corporation and then merge the partnership with and into the new corporation. Here, the separate legal existence of the partnership will terminate on the merger, and and by operation of law, the new the new corporation will succeed to all of the rights and obligations of the partnership. The third option is you need to form a new corporation and then have all of the partnership's assets contributed to the new corporation in exchange for the stock of the new corporation. And following the contribution, the LLC can be liquidated and dissolved and its only assets, which would only be the stock of the corporation, distributed to the members of the LLC. So, and the fourth option is you can form a new corporation and then have the LLC's members assign their, their, the LLC or the partnership for that matter, the, assign their partnership interest to the new corporation. The partnership will be a wholly owned subsidiary of the new corporation following the assignment of the partnership interest. So there is some flexibility with uh, this structure because future operations can either continue under the partnership or the partnership can be liquidated with all of, its, all of its assets and liabilities being assumed by the corporation. So continuing to operate the business either in whole or in part through the subsidiary partnership can be a good option if the partnership has contracts that are not easy to assign to the, to the new corporation or if the founders would prefer not to actually step up new bank accounts, set up new bank accounts, business licenses, and so on and so forth. The least common method is, is a more of a, of a tax strategy that is generally not acceptable to investors. So this met method allows a partnership to convert to a corporation for federal income tax purposes, but not state law purposes, by checking the box and filing Form 8832 to treat the partnership as a corporation. While this method changes the tax treatment of the partnership, it remains a partnership for state law purposes, which can result in a number of complications. So these different approaches to conversion can have different different uh, tax consequences. Again, the company's tax advisors should be consulted as to the best alternative from a tax perspective. Now, I want to dig a little deeper here by saying that there are similar ways when uh, if you are thinking about converting an LLC to a corporation, because you know, I just explained to you how to do it for a partnership. But if you were thinking about maybe, uh, you know, if you wanted to go from an LLC to a partnership and then to a partnership uh, from a partnership to a C corporation, let's talk about what, what are the ways to convert an LLC to a corporation. So in addition to the state legal filings and entity level actions required to complete the conversion, there are other third party uh, third party actions actions rather that must be taken into consideration in preparation for and in connection with the conversion so among this are the following we're just going to put this i mean we have like five important ones that you need to really pay attention to so obtaining the approval of the members of the llc so if you have a multi-member llc you want to make sure that you you really uh, receive uh, the approval of all those members in accordance with the uh the with the um like uh 
like the the internal protocol that you need to go through it's called the operating agreement i was blanking now for a second so operating agreement okay so you need to obtain the approval of the members of the llc that's really important reviewing you want to review agreements including loans leases and supplier and vendor agreements to see if the, if the conversion requires any third party approvals or notifications material agreements with banks and landlords often include provisions requiring the approval of the bank or landlord before completing a conversion or changing the entity's name reviewing licenses and permits to ensure they are changed to reflect the new entity and uh, we also need to think about notifying the company's bank and other third parties of the of the corporation's new employer identification number the, the new ein if the corporation does not or is not able to use the uh, lc's ein and change the name like from uh lc to inc right so it's like uh John Doe LLC to John Doe Inc. This can require establishing a new bank account with a new EIN. And vendors who pay the company and issue the company a 1099 will need to issue the 1099 to the corporation and list the corporation's name and EIN. So you can see that uh, it's pretty uh, pretty involved here. You also need to think about changing uh, labels, business cards, purchase order forms, contracts, policies that reference the LLC to reference the corporation instead. Instead of an LLC, now you have Inc. So basically, although converting a corporate converting to a corporation can be a fairly simple, straightforward, and mostly administrative task, there are important things to consider, right? And the thing is, unfortunately, if they are done wrong, you can end up with a big tax bill. And if done right, you may just end up with a big investment. So it's one of those things where you gotta see if you wanna go from a partnership to a C corporation and you're trying to study the tax implications, you first want to make sure that you are doing things properly in terms of uh, following the the step by step. Boss, I want to quickly remind you of today's topic. We are having a conversation about transitioning from partnership to C corporation. What are the tax implications? Let me give you a bonus here. So basically, when we talk about uh, converting to from partnership. To partnership to C corporation you need to really understand that when we talk about uh like converting partnership we're speaking about llc's uh, also but it's really important to understand that you you can have a single member llc or a multi-member llc and when we talk about multi-member llc we're talking about uh something more convoluted especially if, if your llc actually has uh, members in several states because see when we talk about llc we're speaking about a state affair but when, when we talk about uh Filing for taxes at federal level, you are talking about a federal affair. But the thing is that an LLC has to actually navigate those two uh, those two sort of uh, realms, those two ecosystems. And the thing is, when we talk about partnership, again, for federal tax purposes, an LLC is considered a partnership. A partnership is considered a partnership. So a GP, a general partnership, a limited liability partnership, an LLP is considered a partnership. An LLLP is also considered a partnership. In other words, those uh, four forms of uh, company, so LC, LP, GP, LLLP, they file form 1065, which is actually the uh, the partnership income tax return, but they do not pay taxes at the federal level. The reason I'm saying that is because LCs might be might be treated different from LPs and LPs and the GPs in your state. So every state has its own rules when it comes to a partnership, when it comes to general partnership or a limited, par- limited partnership. What you want to do is you want to really uh, inquire with your uh, with your state tax with your state tax authorities to so have a clear idea about how things work in your state. And the bottom line here also is that you need to understand that conversion actually has to uh, be approved by all the ALC members or or let's say by the partners if you if you're talking about a partnership. But basically, yeah, if you have a multi-member LLC or a multi-member, a multi-partner partnership, you want to make sure that uh, you have uh, the majority vote. And the majority vote sometimes is not just like a 90%. It can be a 50% plus one. It can be very, very short too. It doesn't have to be anything convoluted. So about everything to do those, you have to actually go to the uh, operating agreement that uh, the LLC has right now on the books. Let me talk a little bit about the approach of the IRS when converting a partnership to a corporation. 
And uh, so in revenue rolling 84 dash 11, 11, like 111, the IRS described three specific methods of converting a partnership to a corporation when using a non statutory conversion. Okay. And so basically, here is that you have asset over conversion, you have asset up conversion, and then you have interest over conversion. So when we talk about assets over conversion, the partnership transferred all, all of its assets and liabilities to a newly formed corporation and in exchange received all outstanding stock of the corporation. Subsequently, the partnership terminated by distributing all the newly the newly formed corporation stock to the to the partners. And then you have assets up conversion. So firstly, the partnership distributed all of its assets and liabilities to its members or to its partners and enabled the partnership to terminate. Secondly, the members transferred all the assets received from the partnership to the corporation in exchange for all outstanding stock of the corporation plus the corporation's assumption of all those liabilities. Then you have the interest over conversion. So the partners uh, transfer their, their partner partnership interest to a newly formed corporation and in, in exchange received all the outstanding of the uh, outstanding stock of the corporation and the partnership terminated terminated with the uh, partnership assets and liabilities becoming assets and liabilities of the of the corporation so this is one of those things where you have to really understand now the 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 it's really important that everything is actually uh incorporated in something called statutory conversions or statutory mergers and this is a 2004 irs bulletin and it's one of those things where they the, the agency is uh detailing what you need to do one thing i want to make sure is that all partnership assets and liabilities when you transfer them to the corporation in exchange for stock, they actually uh, the the what the partnership must liquidate, the, you know, after distributing those uh, those assets. Otherwise, uh, we have a different tax situation here. Let's talk about the process here. So when we talk about. Uh, Transitioning from partnership to C corporation, there are some tax consequences, and it's one of those things where you have to be really clear about what really works for you. First of all, you have shareholder tax consequences. So shareholders do not recognize gain or loss on the transfer of, of assets to a corporation in exchange for stock. So that's what we call capitalization. As long as three requirements are satisfied, the, the, those requirements must be satisfied. First, the shareholder must transfer property to the corporation in exchange for stock. The term property includes cash and real or intangible property, but not services. And uh, it's one of those things where you have to understand that basically a partner of a partnership or a member of a limited liability company that is taxed as a partnership is not taxed on the receipt of an interest in the entity in exchange for services as long as interest is a mere profit interest, not a capital interest. So this allows the partner to receive a tax-free but limited economic interest in the partnership. A shareholder's receipts of a stock in exchange for services provided to the corporation is taxable unless the stock is non-transferable or let's say subject to a substantial risk or for feature. So this often makes a partnership or a limited liability company taxed as a partnership the preferred choice of entity if the parties wish to provide a tax-free economic interest in exchange for services. So that's the first part. Okay, first part is that basically the shareholder must transfer property to the corporation in exchange for stock. Second, the transfer must be solely in exchange for stock in the corporation. So if the shareholder receives, let's say, uh, assets under other than stock as part of the transfer, the shareholder is taxed on any gain realized up to the full value of the non-stock assets received from the transaction. The shareholder cannot, however, deduct any loss recognized in the exchange. And uh, basically, and the third option, finally, the shareholder or group of shareholders transferring the assets in exchange for stock must have control of the corporation immediately after the exchange. In this context, control means that the contributing shareholders must own stock, uh, that stock actually that possess at least 80% of the total combined voting power of all classes of stock entitled to vote or at least 80% of the total number of shares of all other classes of stock. So this is basically very important now. While the 80% control requirement to easily satisfy when the corporation is first capitalized, it, present, it actually presents problems for later contributions or of uh, appreciated assets in exchange for stock. 
So there are situations where less than all of the original contributing shareholders who want to transfer assets to, a, to the corporation in exchange for stock. So if this new contributing shareholders have less than 80% control of the corporation after the transfer, basically the contribution does not qualify for tax-free treatment. Instead, the transaction is treated as a sale to the corporation to a, like for a fair market value. The contribution includes appreciated, uh, appreciated property. The contributing shareholders is actually a tax on the on the appreciation. So there are some pretty, you know, pretty straightforward consequences to account for in the process. And now I'm doing the recap. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll speak to you another time. Until then, remember, stay marvelous.